Hey guys, Ed Budd here, and it's time for the second episode in the series of Running Shoe Companions. So if you've just tuned in, this show is basically where Ed Budd becomes Scylla Black for a few minutes. And we try and figure out some obvious and perhaps not so obvious running shoe companions for some of those top race shoes. Today, you've probably already guessed it, it's the Asics Meta Racer and the Alpha Fly Next Percent from Nike. Trying to find some daily options to save those precious, miraculous midsole marvels for raucous ranged rating. Something like that, anyway. So, the Asics Meta Racer first. Just such a crazy bright shoe, isn't it? It always makes my camera go crazy. So this one has a front-loaded plate, very strange shape as well. It's very hard to find any pictures of it. One day I might get my saw out. Certainly a very different design though to that featured in the Saucony Endorphin series or Nike's Vaporfly series too. Asics have got their own very unique take on it all. I mean, the main feature that stands out with this shoe is that very prominent guide sole. It's more curved than something that's very curved. I think a lot of people like this shoe because it's a lot lighter than the Endorphin Pro, about on par really with the Rocket X from Hoka. Probably one that's been on the radar of runners who want that low stack height, so they don't like the big, huge, bulbous cushion. I think the Meta Racer, more than any other shoe really, is a bit of a waste at slow paces. This is a all out shoe or nothing really. All out or go home. Hence we need some options here to provide a similar underfoot feel. Gotta be honest, it's been quite tough coming up with some shoes for this one. So first up, the obvious option's gotta be the Evo Ride. You've got that very similar guide sole here, that curve. It's practically the same as the Meta Racer, though this one provides us with a much more present and padded outfit for our foot. The classic thick A6 padded tongue, almost like a skater tongue. Why we need it so padded, I don't know. Almost an apocalypse resistant upper on this one. It appears many teddy bears were sacrificed to make the padded heel counter. We have Flight Foam Propel here in the midsole. It's similar, it's still quite a firm ride here as you get in the Meta Racer. I don't really find the Meta Racer a particularly cushioned ride. It just reminds me of those low to the ground sports cars. So certainly similar midsole technologies on offer in the two shoes, though here only a five mil drop compared to the Meta Racer's nine mil drop. So this one's probably a little bit more suited for some daily training. I mean, a good value partner, I think, you can pick these up for about £75 now. Sorry, Earth credits. I think durable and close enough in terms of feel to be included in this list today. I wonder if they did use teddy bears to make that padded heel. As I said, the Meta Racer is one of the hardest shoes to come up with some daily training partners. It's just such a unique ride. There's not really anything else quite like it. Now, some of you will disagree with me with the next one, but to me, it feels relatively similar. And it's the SL20 from Adidas. I mean, we got a similar drop here between the two shoes. Upper feel and weight are relatively similar. I think if you're aiming to train in mind of using the Meta Racer as your racing shoe, I think the upper feel, the drop, and the bulk of the shoe need to be close. And I think those are key factors here with the SL20. There's certainly a little bit of the Meta Racer DNA in here. Certainly in terms of underfoot feel as well. The grip, the traction are very similar. I think many say that training in a carbon plate is a bit of a no-no. I think it's fine to use it as a training tool, but not for everyday use perhaps. Certainly not the Meta Racer. I think the Evo Ride and the SL20 give some good options for daily training. They give a ride that's not dissimilar, but perhaps a little bit more forgiving if you're just using it as a platform for standard training. Let me know what you think down in the comments. On to the Alpha Fly now. I'm saving this pair back actually for Christmas. I think it's got all the hallmarks of a Christmas shoe. Always reminds me a bit of a Shire horse, this one. Don't know why. I think the more I utilize my first pair of the Alpha Fly, the more and more I enjoy them. Just becomes more familiar. I'm unlocking more secrets from it. The mysteries are just becoming unfurled with every mile. I don't think this shoe could be any more different than the Meta Racer featured earlier in the video. I mean, you've got that huge midsole stack and the front-loaded high-pressure air pods. I think it's durable enough, but few are crazy enough like me to use them on a daily basis. I say daily, I only get them out to do high-speed runs. I mean, nobody's gonna get this one out of the garage for a Sunday morning preambulation around the muddy paths. So what other shoes give us a taste of what the Alpha Fly has to offer, but isn't the Alpha Fly? I mean, the obvious option has to be the Tempo Next Percent. You've got a predominantly Zoomex midsole here with some React back in the heel, but I still think it's quite a departure 
in the upper from the Alpha Fly. The use of the pods in the forefoot here is similar, but there's loads more underfoot rubber here and it feels quite a lot thicker. It's nowhere near as malleable. I think that rubber does mask the prominence of the AirPods in the Tempo Next Percent a little bit. It's still a snappy, percussive and engaging ride though. It almost orders you to step up your game. It's gotta be Tempo or steady efforts in this one. Seven minutes 20 per mile or higher, that's it. I just don't really feel it works at all at those lower paces. I do wish this shoe though was available in Atom Knit. I know that there is a custom version that you can get in Vaporweave, but I guess then it would just be a slightly more inexpensive Alphafly Next Percent and heavier too with the React. I think quite an obvious and expensive choice for a companion shoe for the Alphafly, but alas, it is very close in terms of execution, but it's not gonna be a daily option for most people. I think this fits firmly into a niche if you're going to use the Alpha Fly to race, perhaps this one's great if you want to do your tempo or speed work. Again, you may disagree with me with the next one, but I feel it's a worthy inclusion. The shoe that never dies, the Pegasus Turbo. I think my choice would be to try and snap up a Peg 35 Turbo or the Turbo 2. Nice lightweight runners, these. Forgiving and nimble. A real workhorse, this shoe. I used it across all sorts of different runs, even races, and it never failed to deliver. Certainly cheaper when on sale. Then the Tempo next percent and a good entry point into that Zoom X midsole foam. You often see the Peg 35 Turbo or the Turbo 2 on sale these days, and it looks sadly like Nike might be phasing out this line. Bad times. Hey, come on, Nike, 2020's been poor enough, you know. Don't phase this beauty out. The underfoot feel's not gonna be massively similar, but the magic of the Alpha Fly is in that Zoom X foam, and you've got it here in a slightly more durable, perhaps, package. It's certainly going to be a more traditional feel to this running shoe rather than the Alpha Fly. But I feel that you could use this on a daily basis, no problem. I don't really know why anyone would use the Alpha Fly for easy miles. I guess if your pocketbook's fat, but the Turbo can be rolled out to help limit that fatigue from training and really is compatible with pretty much a whole cross section of stuff that you might want to do. Tempo, speed work, long runs, you can wear them for your easy days too. I've even used these on a trail and they worked out just fine. I mean, I'm not talking a seriously muddy trail, but on a dry trail, no problem. Sadly, both companion options are a little bit more on the expensive side here, but that's Zoom X foam for you. I'm at a loss for anything else that really fits the bill for the Alpha Fly. There's nothing quite like it. I mean, the Peg 37, you could say, it's got the AirPod in the front. It's nowhere near the feel that you get in the Alpha Fly or the Tempo Next Percent. Any suggestions? If you've got any other great ideas at companion shoes for the Alpha Fly or for the Meta Racer 2, let me know down in the comments. Musical interlude time. It's been ages since I listened to some Smith, so on my walk to work this morning, it was The Queen Is Dead. I've got to say, there are tracks on this album that I always liked, but I always found the title track to be a bit lacking, but I don't know whether it's listening to it on some better headphones, but it sounded fantastic this morning. Johnny Marr's guitar work throughout the track is frantic, and I love that Tom drum introduction it really does generate some tension cemetery gates has always been one of my favorite tracks i love the acoustic guitar work on that track the way the different guitar parts intertwine is just really beautiful i love the fun vibe on frankly mr shankly too it's quite an up and down album as well there's some quite fast frenetic tunes and some quite slow ballad type numbers but certainly one to check out the smiths the queen is dead okay thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video today guys if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already please make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell for notifications below of when we launch those new videos. It does help the channel out a huge amount too if you give this video a thumbs up like and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud and I'll be seeing you.